Did you know you can use one of these and take the existing coax lines that are already run in your house to build a fast, reliable, hardwired network with them? Well, you can, and in today's video, that's exactly what we're gonna do. It's a common scenario, guys. A lot of the homes built in the last 20, 30 years were pulled with coax or RG6 cabling throughout them, but don't have any form of network cabling like Cat6 or even Cat5e pulled in them. And pulling cables after your house is built is difficult. It's time consuming. It can be expensive. As a matter of fact, it's why this channel is dedicated to teaching you all the value of getting those cables in the wall during the building process. It's really important, even if it's something your builder doesn't, you know, offer up front. You gotta ask for it sometimes. So, you know, you might be thinking, well, what about the rest of us? What if we can't do that and that part is too late? Well, if you have some coax cable in your house, you just might be in luck. So you can actually use a device called a MOCA adapter, okay? MOCA stands for Multimedia Over Coax Alliance. So I'm not sure how they come up with these acronyms, but that's what it stands for. And you can actually convert that coax cable that's already in your house to Ethernet to create a hardwired, reliable, fast network. This is much faster than using power line adapters and some of the other things out there. The coaxial line can run at gigabit speeds, which is really, really great. Now, there are a lot of scenarios where this can come in handy. Maybe you want to build a ubiquity network, but you don't have the wires in your house. Well, you can do that. And as a matter of fact, that's what we're going to be doing today. Or there are simpler cases. Maybe you have a mesh system like um, Google Wi-Fi or an Orbi system, and you'd like to physically connect them together because of how far apart they are or how your house is laid out. You can use it for that too. No matter what the scenario is, these things can really come in handy. So today I thought we'd actually use some MOCA adapters to build a hardwired network using the coax in my house to show you guys how this works. So buckle up because here's what we're going to be covering. First and foremost, we're going to talk about times, I'm going to say when not to do this. And when I say when not to do it, I just mean there's going to be some challenges involved, right? Not every house is wired the same. And so there are certain wiring types or certain wiring scenarios where this tends to work a little bit better. And we're gonna talk through that. Then we're gonna talk about the tools and parts you're gonna to need to put this thing together. And you're gonna to need some tools and the ability to kind of trace some of your cables. Otherwise, this can take a really long time if you just kind of take the guessing game approach. Um, then we're gonna talk about some of the general setup process. Now, the good news is there's not much to do to set these up. They're pretty plug and play, but there is a certain way that you need to connect things so everything works and we're going to talk through that and then we're going to proof it right we're going to build a unified network right here today running over these mocha adapters we'll do some speed tests and i'll show you exactly what we're getting here and i'll show you how it works now i never want to discourage you guys from doing this sort of thing however there are some certain scenarios out there where this can work well and then some where it doesn't work very well at all and so i think it's important to highlight those up front before you guys get all excited about the concept of doing this, right? So the first one I want to highlight is if you are using the coax lines in your house today for a TV service like cable TV or satellite TV, whatever, there's going to be an element of challenge. You cannot use these boxes on the same jack that cable TV services are running through. And I'll even tell you a little story here where I took down an entire neighborhood twice because we were trying to implement something like this and it just we just couldn't make it work in conjunction with the cable TV services. Now, it's not to say you can't do it, but the lines you're using for the network have to be completely dark. That means not tied to any of the cable splitters. They have to be kind of off on their own. So it is possible there's just an element of challenge there, right? And it's going to limit where you can put some of the network devices because you have to use jacks in your house that are completely abandoned and not near a television. OK, so just kind of understand that that scenario makes it a little tricky. The other scenario is um, where the lines are pulled to, the coax lines are pulled to in your home. So in the last 20, 30 years, you know, typically houses ha had coax pulled in them already during the building process. They would pull them back to a central location. In my house, it's a basement. Sometimes it's a back room. Whatever it is for you guys, they would pull them back to a central location. That's what works best. That is what we want. That scenario is great. However, 
you get in some of these older houses, 50, 60, 70 years, that were pre-cable, the coax lines a lot of times were added after the fact, and they're run all over the place, over the back of the roof and under the deck and whatever to be able to add cable TV service after it was invented. Um, and a lot of times those houses, the splitters, where they're all connected together, are on the exterior of the house. So that really doesn't work very well for this. One, you need power. And a lot of times in that little gross box with all the spider webs and the splitters and stuff, there's no power there. And these require power to be online. So it would be very difficult. I'm not going to say impossible, but there's going to be some very, very difficult challenges if that is um, something that you are facing at your house, right? Anytime the cable lines will run after the fact, it just gets a little bit more tricky. And then if you're using those still for cable TV, you're probably not gonna be able to do this. So I just wanna highlight those. Those aren't the only two, but those are the big ones I run across um, quite a bit. And so I wanted to make sure you guys were aware of it before you ran out and bought equipment here. So real quick, I just wanna tell you a story about how I took down the neighborhood two, different, two separate times using Mocha adapters, right? Because it applies to what I'm talking about here. Now, the scenario was we had a person worked out of her home, um, had a home office, had a TV with cable services in her office. I mean, watching TV while she works, totally makes sense, right? And we had a very weird issue. The issue was her laptop would not allow her to make Teams calls, like audio calls and video calls, if it was on the Wi-Fi. Even though we had great speed, she'd pull like 250 megabits down, no problems there. I mean, it was not a speed issue. There was something specifically in her model of laptop that the chipset was weird, but it conflicted with the Wi-Fi somehow, anyway, we couldn't do it. The second you plugged a physical line into our docking station, everything fixed it. It was only a Wi-Fi issue. So we're like, all right, we need to get a hard line in here somehow. And currently we're running a cable down the hallway and in the door and it was ugly and tripping over it and whatever. So I said, well, let's get involved and let's try and get a Mocha adapter in there. We'll convert some coax to it and we'll, we'll do it that way. Now, you're not supposed to do that. I didn't know that at the time because the boxes I have have a TV port on them. So you can actually loop the TV into the box using a single coax jack in a room and still be able to run internet and cable TV through the box. So I'm like, all right, so we've hooked everything up, got it to work, solved all of our problems. Her TVs work fine, her internet worked fine, we fixed the laptop issue, everything was good. However, two days later, I think it was two days, Cox came knocking on her door and said, hey, we are having outages in the neighborhood and we've traced the signal back to her house. What I didn't know is these emit a signal and that signal can interfere with at least Cox's TV service. So it took everybody down in the neighborhood even though hers was working just fine. So they were able to trace that signal using some tools, found out that we put these Mocha adapters in and forced us to take them off. That was time number one. So she called me, we got back involved. I said, that's weird, I didn't know that, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. Did some research, found out you can actually buy a little coax filter, a little thing you screw on the line and it filters out the signal that these use and before it leaves the house and supposedly solves this problem. So we bought the filter, we implemented that in the house this time and hooked everything back up. Thought we were good, or at least crossed our fingers and found out it indeed did not work. Cox had to come back out, found it was the same house. Everybody's mad at us, all the neighbors, Cox is mad at us. We had to, I tried to explain to them what we were trying to do. I asked them if they had a solution, which they were very unhelpful. Um, they just wanted us to stop breaking everything. So we ended up having to take the system out. We used power line adapters and actually converted her power lines to ethernet, which drastically decreased her speed, but allowed her to make these video calls no problem. Just something weird about her laptop and we were able to do it that way. So it was a lot of back and forth. We took the whole neighborhood down twice. Everybody was mad at us. And it was all because we were trying to use this in conjunction with Cox Cable TV services, which does not work, guys. So take it from me. Don't try it. It's not worth it. Um, you're going to make everybody mad at you. But I just wanted to share that little story with you. Okay, so let's talk about tools and parts that we're gonna use in today's video. And I just wanna call out your situation may dictate that you have more or less of what we're using today. So just kinda of understand, you don't have to use what we're gonna use, but I wanted to introduce you to them so you can kinda of see what we're, what, how this is kinda of gonna connect together here. So first and foremost, you're gonna need some Mocha adapters. Today's video, we're gonna use three of them. One at the head end, and then we're gonna deploy one at each jack where we're gonna put some network equipment. At a minimum, you'll need at least two. One to convert it from ethernet to coax, and then you send the signal through your coax lines, and then you go to the other end and you convert it back to ethernet. So you'll see here in a second on Amazon, they're typically sold in pairs. So 
On Amazon, I just searched for Mocha Adapter 2.5, which actually stands for 2.5 gigabits of speed. And you can see there's pairs of them for around 100 bucks. So you ought to kind of determine what you need. If you do decide you need three, like we're doing in today's video, this Hytron brand down here actually sells it in a pack of three, which I thought was kind of nice. Um, so that'd be something that I would be looking at if I was buying something today, even though I've never used that brand before. It was pretty high in the search results, so it's probably pretty good. All right, the second thing we're going to use is a power splitter. This basically allows us to connect one of these Mocha adapters into this power splitter and send the signal out eight ports. Now, this is a power splitter, so it actually has one of these ports will provide power using this power brick. And the reason I like a power splitter is because when you, when you amplify the signal coming out of these, I just think you get better results. Um, things that play into this is how old your cables are, how long they are, you know, distance can play an issue. So by amplifying that signal, um, I just feel you have better results. But you might not need eight ports. You might only need two or three or whatever. So, you know, shop accordingly. This is just what I had laying around the house. And next, I want to talk about tools, guys. So tools, I'm going to say, I would say it's kind of optional that you don't need them, but boy, it sure makes your life easier. And no matter what, at a minimum, you're going to need some crimping tools because we're going to have to make some cables here. So I like the Klein brand. It's always served me very, very well. Um, and these just tend to work really, really well here. Um, we have a uh, port mapper or a cable mapper, right? So I've bought this over the years. It works with the Ethernet, phone lines, and coax. It can also send a tone through the line and I can sniff it with my wand here. Uh, also comes with these little kits where you can actually map out the jacks. So if we go over here to Amazon, you'll see the one I have linked down here actually comes with the stripper, the crimper, the mapper, and allows you to, even comes with some ends that you can do. And I'll show you how all this works because um, we'll make some cables together and I'll show you how to use the tools. But I really like the Klein brand. And as you can see, it doesn't really break the bank. So uh, to me, that's an, another bonus. All right, so how does all this connect together? You got your tools, you got your pieces, but how does it all connect together? Let's talk about that next. So what I've done is I've created a couple scenarios here where I feel you could use Mocha adapters um, to solve a sort of problem. So let's run through those and I'll just, and I think it'll kind of paint this picture for you guys. So the first one is maybe you have an area of your house where you just can't run network cables, right? So you part of your house, you were able to get up in the attic and drop some lines down the wall and, and you were able to deploy a network, but you need to connect it back to another part of your house that you just, there's no nice way to run it, um, no easy way to run it, no cheap way to run it. So we're gonna use Mocha adapters in that case. So basically our internet would come into one, we would convert it to coax, have it right through the cables in the wall. And then wherever we had our network deployed to, we just simply convert it back to ethernet and plug in our switch. And then from there you can deploy the rest of your network. Now in a case like this, you probably wouldn't need an eight port splitter, right? You'd only need a couple ports, which is nice. And you would only need a pair of Mocha adapters, which is nice too. And it, you'll see that you're gonna have a nice hardwired backbone, giving you the good speed you need and you can deploy this network just like if you had ethernet run the whole way. So the next one is for my mesh users out there. Now, I always say that mesh systems work a lot better if you can physically connect them together, even though you don't have to. Sometimes there's a weird layout in your house or you have thick walls and they just don't talk to each other very well. So you could use Mocha adapters to physically connect those units together. And this is a really, really nice way of doing it um, in all honesty. So basically you'd have your main unit uh, where your internet comes in and where all your coax lines are, and I'll explain that here in a minute. You would convert it from ethernet to coax, ride through the walls, and then just basically go find a room that has a coax jack in it, right? And, to, and convert it back to ethernet and plug in your mesh units. That gives you a nice physically connected mesh network that you can run through the app, just like everything um, would run if they were physically connected with ethernet, but they're gonna be using these adapters. Now, the next scenario is what we're going to actually build today. This is a little closer to what we're going to build today, um, and I'll show you kind of how this works. We're actually going to use three Mocha adapters. I have a Cloud Gateway Ultra that's going to be our internet router. We're going to convert that signal to coax. Coax is going to go into our power splitter, and then we're going to deploy two additional Mocha adapters um, in different areas of my house. In one area, we're going to use come out of it and go directly into a PoE injector and power a single access point. 
And on the second area of the house, we're going to use a Mocha adapter. We're going to come out of it with Ethernet and go into a PoE switch. And from the PoE switch, we're going to connect an access point. Now we're going to be able to go right into our Cloud Gateway Ultra and adopt all these devices and plug everything in and be able to have a really nice hardwired network using the coax lines in our house. And it's really, really cool stuff. I'm excited to do it. All right, so real quick before we plug this in, and I know this video has been a lot of talk, 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 and you want to see uh, us get to it. But there's a sort of gotcha scenario that I need to outline for those of you out there who are using cable internet service. That means your router is getting its internet from coax, right? Remember, we're using the coax in our house. And so some of you out there might have Cox or Comcast or Spectrum or whatever, and you're actually using coax still to get internet to your house, right? I'm talking to you guys. Um, this doesn't affect fiber users. It doesn't affect DSL lines. It's only those of you who are using coax. And the gotcha is a lot of times what will happen is that router, that coax um, router or modem or whatever is sitting in an office somewhere. And that office has a single um, coax jack in it. Just one. A lot of times they only run one jack to each room. And so your router is currently using that jack in your office. Unfortunately, that will not work with Mocha adapters. You would need one line to feed the router, and then you would need another line to send the signal back down to where your splitter is at, your power splitter, right? And so in a case like this, if this is you and your router's sitting in a room like this, you're going to have to physically move that router down to where all of your cables are down in the basement, where the splitter, you're gonna have to move it because we need that jack for converting the signal with this, and you can't have both. Now, if your office or the room you're in does have multiple coax jacks in it, great. You use one to get feed the router, and you can run the signal down the other one, but you cannot do it if the room has a single jack. And I've seen a lot of people sit there scratching their heads wondering how they're gonna, go, how they're gonna do this, and the answer is move your router down to where your splitter's at, and it'll work just fine. All right, guys, so let's get this thing set up and working. So I'm gonna kind of go through what I got going on here. We're gonna start at the network head end area. This is where our internet and our splitter and everything is gonna be. So we have, we have our tools here. The only tool I don't have here is um, the other end of this, which is my mapper, which is actually up on one of the bedroom uh, sending tone down through here right now. So we have our router. The router has an active internet connection. This gray cable going into the back of it here is a hot connection from my Verizon 5G home internet. And this thing has an internet connection. Then we're gonna choose one of the LAN ports on this. So that's this blue cable. And we're gonna come out and go into our Mocha adapter, okay? There's only one port on the back of this, okay? So we're gonna go right into that. So basically this is the part of the setup where we're gonna convert ethernet into coax. Then our coax is gonna come out of this Mocha adapter and go into the input port of our splitter. Every splitter has a power port, an input port, and then however many output ports, right? So the output ports are going to the other areas of the house. The input is what we're gonna feed it, and then the power is gonna to connect to our little power brick here, which I'm gonna show you how to make these cables so you guys know how to um, as part of this. So I've already toned out the two jacks where we're gonna go, and I'll kind of show you that process a little bit too, um, just so you guys can kind of see how I do it. There's some advantages of using a sniffing tool versus the mapper, okay? So if you guys wanna spend a little extra money and get one that has a sniffing tool, this does make it easier, and I'll explain why. So we have our internet going in, we're gonna convert it to uh, coax. Coax is going to go under our splitter. Our splitter is going to shoot it out to the rest of the house and then in those other locations we're going to convert it back to Ethernet and connect our devices. All right guys so I want to show you how to use the tools here. We're going to have to make some cables and you're going to see on the other end you're going to need to make some little cables too. So I went out and bought a hundred foot of RG6 coax from Home Depot. It was like 27 bucks not too expensive. I mean, more than I like to pay for spare cable laying around, but um, you're going to need some. This was the smallest amount I could do. If you have some patch cables laying around, you can also use those. But I like to make them so you can make them custom length, and it's nice to have these tools here, and I'll show you just how easy this process is. Okay, so we got our, our uh, this is our stripper, 
So we're gonna, this is what we're going to use to strip the shielding off of it. And then this is what we're going to use to put the ends on. You'll find that this is very, very easy. Now, one thing I want to point out too is, I didn't realize this when I recorded the first part of the video, but all these tools and these ends are available at Home Depot and Lowe's. I actually went and picked this up locally at Lowe's and saw that they had pretty much all these tools in there. So if you don't want to order on Amazon, that's perfectly good too. I'll try and put some links to some of those in the description as well, just so you guys can see them. But you are going to need to make some ends, so having a little extra cable is good. So I've snipped off a little piece here, right? And I want to show you guys how to strip that and put the ends on. So you, we got a nice clean, clean end here, right? So first we're going to grab our stripper, and there's a little sliding piece here. You'll see it kind of be able to slide up and down. So we want it in the up position, so it's blocking that hole, right? So there's a hole, and then this is just spring activated so we're gonna push it down we're gonna shove our cable all the way in it's got to go all the way in so it's touching that black piece on the other side and that being in the down position is what allows us to strip the cable there's some little razor blades in there and they're gonna cut everything exactly how we want so once it's in there you just spin it around the cable like this a couple spins and then just pull straight out and you'll see you're left with a nice crimped in ready to go so now sorry a nice end ready for the crimping so then we're just going to take one of our one of our little guys here sorry i'm trying to get this in the camera um we're going to just push it all the way up in as far as far as we can go just nice and tight you don't have to go crazy don't make veins pop out of your neck but you're just going to pop in there then we're going to grab our crimping tool here right looks like this and then you'll see there's this part right here. This cable just kind of lays in that trough like so. Okay, and it'll just kind of slide right in there. And then you just squeeze it. One squeeze. And now you have a perfectly nice cable. Okay, nice end, nice and tight. Can spin and put it on at whatever length you want. So I already got the other side cut, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put an end on that real quick. Okay, real easy. You see it just, it's pretty fast. Just like that. And that's how you make really nice cables. So we're gonna use this one for our power cable. So we'll go ahead and screw one in into the power plug side, all right? Okay, I got a power plug under my table. And then this port on my deal says power. So we're gonna plug that in here and that will give our device Power. Okay. Now, I didn't mention this earlier when I was talking about, you know, how I like to use power splitters, but basically whenever you split something, you lower the signal, but a power splitter reamplifies that. So it's really handy to have a power splitter because typically splitters um, make the power get weaker every time you split it, right? You're cutting the signal every time you split something, but with a power splitter, it reamplifies that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this, I'm gonna go ahead and get this plugged in. I'm gonna make a cable that goes from our Mocha adapter to here, and then we'll get things fired back up again. All right, so we are ready to go. I wanna just kind of show you what we got going on here, and then I wanna talk to you quickly about tone generating versus mapping. So. Our power splitter has a green light, which tells us it's receiving power. That's great. Uh, that's what we want. It means our power light's working and the splitter's working. Um, depending on which one you buy, your light may be a little different, but most of them that have power have some kind of a light somewhere. All right, and then you got our Mocha adapter. Now, depending on which one you buy, yours may look a little different, obviously, but most of them that I've seen have little indicator lights on them, which are extremely helpful for this setup. So on mine here, I have a couple little indicator lights. One is a network, has a little network symbol, and the other one is our coax, okay? So the network one is blinking, and that basically says this device is receiving a network signal, which we're sending it with this blue cable. If I unplug that blue cable, the network light turns off, okay? So that tells me that it's receiving a signal, and it's ready to convert it to coax. The coax light comes on when this device can see one of its buddies. So this cable right here is in my living room and I have it all connected up and ready to go with the access point and everything. So that is the one where we're just going into the PoE injector and then we're just gonna power an access point by itself. There's no switch here. 
this device turns on the little coax light when it can see his buddy. That means we have a good connection and that's a win. So make sure you're looking for that when you're hooking these up because most of them do have some kind of an uh, indicator light. Now, real quick, I just wanna, I'm not gonna go too deep into the mapping tool versus the sniffing tool. I'm a fan of the sniffing tool, but there's pros and cons to each. Let's just cover that real quick. Now, up in the bedroom, I have my, um, my mapper and it's hooked into the wall via coax. So I got one end on the mapper, and the other end goes right into the wall jack. And I have it turned on in a way that it sends tone down the line. So if I sniff this out, you can hear the tone, okay? Now, that's great. That tells me this cable goes to that room. That's how I know, that's how I know, okay? So that seems really great. The downside to using a wand is every time you want to go tone a jack, you got to go move the mapper, right? You got to go move the other end, right? That's kind of a, a little bit of a pain. But most of the time, you're not doing 30 jacks. You're doing two or three, right? So not a big deal there. Now, there's also these mapping tools. And the mapping tool will usually come with a couple of these uh, little ends like this, and each one has a number on them. So this one's number four. So basically, I could take these, I could go up into all the locations where I want to map out the jack. I'll put number four in the kitchen, number two in the bedroom, and I just stick them on the little wall outlet, okay? And they'll just stick there. And these will emit a signal that our mapping tool can see. However, the downside to the mapping tool is all of your cables down here need to have ends on them because you have to screw the mapping tool into the cable to see which numbers plugged in. You're going to have to test this one and then this one and this one. With the wand, with the sniffing wand, you got a cable like this with no end. I can, I can sniff that cable. I don't have to put an end on it. So if you're going to use the mapping tool for this, great little tool. Um, you're going to have to put ends on every one of your cables down here so you know uh, which one is which. And you're going to have to Bring the mapping tool one at a time, screw it on each one. However, there's no running back and forth. You got four in the kitchen, two in the bedroom, whatever. And when you plug in the tool, it'll actually say that's number two, that's number four. And you just go, okay, that's the cable. Then you put the end, uh, then you just screw that cable into your switcher or your splitter and you're, you're good to go. So pros and cons to each. It's just one of the little things that gets you. Um, so I wanted to kind of go over that. So the mapping tool, you have to put ends on everything. The sniffing tool might cost a little bit more, but you can sniff blank cables and only put ends on the ones you want. You just have to do a little bit more running back and forth. Okay, so I hope that helps you guys. Let's go look at the other ends of these and I'll show you what this, uh, let's get, let's uh, proof this out here. Okay, so down here we got our coax coming out of the wall. It goes and loops around, goes into our mocha adapter. I apologize for the dust. And we have, basically this is gonna convert from coax back to ethernet. So if you have our cable going in here, then I have it going into that power injector like we talked about. And then that comes up and goes into our access point, which is sitting on the stand. And that will allow us to adopt this device and get hardwired Wi-Fi up in my living room area. Everything's hooked up. And I wanna call out the obvious fact that cables are hard to hide when you use Mocha adapters. There's just a lot more of them, right? So depending on what you're using, you may have to come up with some sort of plan to hide this or maybe have a furniture piece you can put in front of it because there are a lot more cables. But if we move up here, you'll see our switch. And basically the switch is receiving a signal from downstairs, right? This is our, our trunk port coming up all, through the Mocha adapter into our switch. And then this one right here is going to our access point that we have sitting on the desk. Down below on the Mocha adapter, like we mentioned, there's your indicator lights, right? Your The coax lights on indicating that it sees one downstairs and the other one is your network light indicating there's network equipment plugged to it. So all in all guys, this is what you're looking for. This is gonna work out really fine and I'll show you here when we adopt equipment that everything shows up online. All right, finally, the part you wanted to see the whole time, right? We're finally getting to it. I know it's been a lot of talk, talk, talk. Thanks for hanging in there with me. So you can see as I log into my Cloud Gateway Ultra, all my devices automatically show up ready to be adopted. I can go ahead and click them to adopt them and bring them online. Now, one thing I do want to call out, I did splash a little message on the screen earlier, but I want to make sure I take a moment and explain something here. If you're using this to 
in a Ubiquiti network like we did today. Just know you get full functionality, right? You don't have to limit your functionality. VPNs will work, VLANs will work, firewall rules, guest networks, all the stuff that Ubiquity offers, you do not lose any of that by using Mocha adapters, which is really, really good. Same thing if for my mesh users out there, guys, your apps are gonna have full functionality, which is great. So um, I just wanna make sure we call that out there that you know, this is a good plan. It does save you money. Hopefully it saves you some time to be able to use those coax cables and you don't have to limit yourself on the back end because everything will work just as it's designed to do. Um, so the last thing I want to do here is I want to run a quick speed test. We're going to plug directly into the Cloud Gateway Ultra with a physical connection and just go to fast.com. And then I'm going to go upstairs where it's running through the Mocha adapter and physically plug into that switch and do a speed test again. Now, normally I would do an iPerf test, but we are finishing our basement. So all my equipment is tucked away and stored and I couldn't get it out for this video. So I apologize, it's not a true speed test. Please don't beat me up too much, but you guys will see, we're gonna get some normal speed tests through it. So let's go ahead and bang that out. This test is from directly being connected into the Cloud Gateway Ultra. All right, 140 megabits per second, that's fine. So now we're gonna go plug into the switch upstairs, which is running through the Mocha system and do the same thing. Okay, so now I have the laptop plugged into our little switch upstairs going through the Mocha adapter. Let's go ahead and run another test here. Boom, same thing, awesome. So that tells me we're getting full speed through it. Now, again, I'm not doing gigabit, 10 gig, anything crazy, and I, we didn't do iPerf, I realize that, but you can see we're getting great speeds. If we were doing a, using a mesh, we would lose speeds. I'm two floors up. All my equipment's in my basement and I'm on the second floor in my daughter's room. So as you can see, distance kind of goes out the window when you use something like Mocha adapters. All right, so let's wrap up our thoughts here. Whew, okay, I know that was a long video. Thank you for hanging out with me to the end. Um, what I want you to walk away with guys here is that Mocha is a great option for anybody who wants to hardwire the network in their house, but doesn't have the ability to put network cables in there. It's gonna give you the best throughput. It's gonna give you the best speed. There's you really aren't even hit up with too big a distance limitations, especially in a home environment. So it really is the best of all worlds. The challenge is if you have cable TV, how to make the wires look nice, because obviously that is a big challenge. And for some of you guys out there, you know, where you like everything to look perfect, um, this is gonna create some little bit of challenges. But hopefully you took away enough from this video to kind of be able to work through those and be able to implement this sort of solution on your own. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I apologize again that I couldn't do the iPerf speed test, but hopefully what we did, you know, at least painted that picture a little bit for you. And um, yeah, as always, guys, leave comments, ask questions. I'll get to them as soon as I can. And thanks for watching.